Welcome to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about payload and understanding how much weight your vehicle can carry. So our 2019 F-250 has a thousand pounds of snowplow hanging off the front. And if you notice, the snowplow hangs off pretty far on the front end. And we have a one cubic yard salt dog spreader, which is about 300 pounds. And it's pretty much all located behind the rear axle. Now, the gross vehicle weight rating for this F-250 is 10,000 pounds, and we're allowed 3,366 as far as payload, so 3,366 pounds of payload. So, when loading your vehicle, you want to make sure you stay under your gross vehicle weight rating. In this particular case, it's 10,000 pounds. And usually that's what F-250s are. Sometimes they're a little bit less, but once you get the uh, snowplow package, you usually end up at 10,000 pounds for an F-250. If you go to an F-350 and get a payload package, you might get another 1,000 pounds or so, maybe another 1,100 pounds, depending on the configuration, give or take. Uh, but uh, that will put you over 10,000 pounds, which will put you in a different category of vehicle. Uh, something that requires a DOT number and things like that. Uh, but in this particular situation, being that it's an F-250, you can get away with not having a DOT number because you're just under the 10,000 pounds. But you uh, want to make sure, particularly in this case, that you don't overload an individual axle. Uh, when I lift this plow off the ground, I'm picking up 1,000 pounds, but I'm extended off the front end pretty far uh, you're talking two, three feet. Um, a lot of the weight is extended away from the front end. And that essentially gives the plow leverage over the front axle. So what that ends up doing is pulling down the front end and lifting up the rear. Lifting up the rear end. So if you were to put scales on all the tires, you'd find that the rear of the truck got lighter, lost weight, or lost weight over the wheel, rear wheels, and keep in mind that the rear end of the truck is already relatively light compared to the front end because the engine uh, is in the front and it's pretty heavy. The Super Duties have heavier drive trains. You're talking iron block. Uh, they're pretty heavy engines. Um, all that weight starts to accumulate on the front axle. So not only are you carrying the weight of the plow, but you're carrying more of the weight that would normally be on the rear axle also on the front axle. So if you just hook up a plow, even though you're well within the payload of the vehicle or the gross combined weight rating of the vehicle, you could or for sure would go over the um, axle rating of the front axle, which is why whenever you go, whenever you order a plow or get a plow, they tell you exactly how much weight of ballast you need to put behind the rear axle. On this particular case, I believe it's 400 pounds that is required behind the rear axle. And traditionally what I've done to achieve that is I've run sandbags back here. Now this spot here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of sandbags here in this little spot. I'm gonna put another bracing here so, they, so that they don't move around. But I'm gonna add maybe another 100 pounds or so behind the rear axle. And what that's going to do is bring the rear end back down so that more weight gets transferred to the rear. So every time you add weight to the back of the bed behind the axle, you're taking weight away from the front axle. So even though the overall gross vehicle weight rating is getting higher, or not rating, but even though the overall gross vehicle weight is going up, the weight being placed behind the rear axle lowers the amount of weight on the front axle so uh, being that I'm only like I think I think the softer is only like 300 pounds or so it's gonna be beneficial for me to put a couple hundred more pounds back there maybe just 120 or so pounds two sandbags which would give me um, just a little bit more uh, weight take a little bit more weight away from the front end it'll be more weight pushed far back and it helps out a lot with the wear and tear on your front suspension uh you know you don't want to go over the weight of the front suspension it's harder on the ball joints i mean you can if you can only imagine how much weight you're pulling off of the rear end once you lift up the 
uh, plow. So you want to make sure that you know how much ballast you need and you're running the correct amount of ballast. Um, another thing to consider too when you're thinking about payload is your salt spreader. Salt is surprisingly heavy if you think about it. And you see a lot of guys, you can get easily get a two yard salt spreader back here, which is okay, but you can't really fill it up legally. Now if you kind of know your route and you know where you're, where you're going, you're not getting on the highway, maybe you get loaded and you drive a half a mile, you might be able to get away with it. You know, if you drive side streets uh, a half a mile, whatever, and you're not getting on any main roads or any highways, you could probably get away with it. But, you know, if something were to happen and you were to have, you know, two yards of salt, two yards of salt can weigh 4,000 pounds. In excess of 4,000 pounds, could even be close to 4,500 pounds just with two yards of salt. Then you add in the weight of the salt spreader itself. That's another four to 500 pounds, depending on what you get, which is why I like the salt dog spreader because these things are pretty light compared to some of the others. They're poly spreaders. This spreader, like I said, is like 300 pounds. And even if you got a two yard, you're only looking at like 450 pounds or so. Not that much heavier. Where some of the like uh, Fisher and uh, Western salt spreaders, the bigger ones, they start I think at 1.5 yards, and I believe they weigh like 600 pounds. So when you're already kind of limited on your payload, the last thing you want to do is give up a couple hundred pounds to just a spreader. But um, this is going to be an interesting setup because most of this spreader, you know, most of the weight is going to be pretty much behind the rear axle if you can look at where it kind of stops is right there at the axle so it's going to put a lot of weight behind the rear axle so even though it's only one yard it's going to be pretty heavy duty uh on the rear end so i, I wonder if it, you know if, it, if it's going to give me enough traction to plow and two-wheel drive it probably will but at the end of the day loaded with salt it's it's going to be Honestly, this setup alone is going to be close to the max payload. I mean, technically speaking, with one cubic yard of salt potentially weighing 2,200 pounds or so, depending on how fine it is or how wet it is or different conditions, if it's really dry and really coarse, it'll be on the lighter side. But if it's really fine and kind of moist or wet, then it'll be on the heavier side. It's going to be interesting to see how, how it does. It should do really good. Uh, you could, in, in an F-250, you could easily put two yards of salt back here it'll squat but it will definitely take it it wouldn't break nothing but that being said it could void your warranty if your dealership could prove that you did that you know if anything ever happened as far as mechanical failures you'd have to you couldn't tell them that you put two yards of salt getting warranty work done you know i mean usually it's pretty cool but you never know you know what kind of dealer they're trying to get out of warranty work um you might not be able to necessarily say what you were doing um, you'd have to understand that you can't, you know, overload your vehicle. Uh, in my particular area, it's not a big deal. No one's really checking. But then again, if you were on the highway and the state police, you know, they're the ones who's potentially going to weigh your truck and figure out how much weight's on every axle and that whole deal. You know, local police, not so much. But, you know, if you have to jump in the freeway for a little bit, then things can get a little bit squirrely. So, anyway, just just a quick video talking about payload and understanding. Like I say, this setup, you got 300 pounds right there. You got the wood structure that kind of supports it. And that goes along with the straps in conjunction. You, you don't want to just have it free-floating in the rear. So, it's got straps. It's got a wood frame. That wood adds weight. Uh, a couple hundred pounds, I'm sure. Then you got your 1,000 pounds in the front. You got two you can easily go over weight even with the small salt spreader so something to consider i mean really technically speaking in order to load that thing fully i shouldn't have the plow on at the same time in order to be a hundred percent legit you know loading it up 2,000 2,200 pounds potentially thousand on the front the driver i'm gonna be right there at the uh, maximum payload but anyway tell me what you guys think about this video um, I think the one yard is going to work out good. There's a little space here that if I can't get loaded somewhere, I can throw, go ahead and put a couple bags of salt back here and I can put the salt through it. Um, but I'm typically going to run balk material, but you never know. A lot of times I have to salt small properties when 
you know, downspouts have melted and uh, for whatever reason, you can't get into there with, you can't get loaded. You know, it's early in the morning, the 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 uh, yard where you can get loaded hasn't opened yet, or whatever case, and you just can't get loaded. You need to spread a couple bags. I can keep a 